Okay, so I have my basic outlines. And the next thing to do is to start drawing some of the interior details of these. Um, now, I want to be able to fill those interior details with color. So, that was the, the main thing that you should have taken away if you ever did the, um, the, the other version, of the previous version of this tutorial, was that um, the best way to do well, there are a couple ways to do that. And I'll show you two, and I'm going to show you why I choose the one that I choose. So I'm going to go ahead and draw the basis for the sole of my shoe. Okay. So there are two ways of adding color into the sole of this shoe, or two uh, main ways anyway. The main ways you would want to do this are A, select both objects. Go to Object, um, Live Paint, Make. This is going to make this a Live Paint object, which means that if I take this Paint Bucket tool, right here, this Live Paint Bucket tool, and select a color, then I can fill different parts of my shoe. Now that works really well. That's actually, uh, Live Paint is an amazing tool, and I use it all the time. So I don't want you to come away thinking, that I don't like live paint, because I do. But um, in this case, the reason that I chose not to go with live paint and to go with a different method is because of this. Um, if I want to add a, uh, like a, a uh, dashed line to that, for instance, I could go ahead and add in my stroke palette. I could add a dash to that line. And it's dashed. But then, I have to go in and delete parts so that they're not hanging out, which is a little bit of extra work. And then also, um, I think I have a lot less flexibility in terms of what I can actually do with those paths. So I can't, for example, select this path and then make an offset of that path that's a dynamic offset so that I have a double line there. So if I do a uh, path, offset path, 5 pixels. It'll do it, but it, it makes my fill weird. It, the fill goes all the way out to the outer path, and it's a little bit difficult to control. And, and I use that trick quite a bit, the, the offset path. So instead of that, what I want to do, undo all the way back, get rid of my live paint object, what I'm going to do instead is use clipping masks. So what I'm going to do is finish this shape. We can fill it whatever color we want, get rid of the stroke, move it to the back by hitting a, a command shift and the left bracket, or control shift left bracket on the PC. And I select this object and that object, and then hit, oh, this object and that object, then hit uh, Command 7 or Control 7, or go to Object, Clipping Mask, Make. Now what that's going to do, it may, it'll make your outline disappear momentarily, but we can fix that. Um, but it has clipped this shape within that outer shape, and if we look in our Layers palette, you can see here it is. Here's a group, this is our side view of our shoe, and it shows here's the clipping path, and here's the path that's being clipped. So if I select the pit clipping path, I can go ahead and put the stroke back on that, give it a black stroke again, so I can see it better. And I could set my stroke to something thicker. Okay. And I could actually, I can also select it and give it a fill if I want to. Uh, so, there we go. I have a fill on it. Um, and unfortunately, that's going to hide what's underneath, so I'm not going to put a fill on it yet, but I just want to show you that you could. And um, also, I can still edit this original shape inside here using the open arrow tool. This one right up here, or the A key on the keyboard. So that makes it really easy to update things inside my group. I can double click on this group, and then I don't need to use the open arrow, I can use the closed arrow to select things, because I'm in isolation mode inside of this group, just selecting things within the group. If I double click back on the on the uh, canvas again, it gets me back out of group mode. Watch what happens in the layers palette when I double click on this. See now it shows me isolation mode, 
I'm just working with this group and that's all. Um, so I can't select anything outside the group like this for instance. But if I double click back on the artboard, we're back to our top level design. So now I would say we should just go through and draw the rest of the shapes in here and fill them in. So I'm going to draw one more so you can watch and then we will move on. Okay, we have a shape, we can make that a color, get rid of its stroke, move it to the back, and to add it to our clipping mask, I can just take that path and just drag it right into this group here under the clipping mask, and now it is being clipped, and it's in front of our sole, so I'm going to have to take the sole and drag it on top of the gray piece, so that now we're seeing the sole on top of the gray piece. Okay, I'm going to go through and add the rest of these shapes and um, then get back to you.